They started firing again on 15th of July. Those bombs were landing on me only. There are 73 shrapnel still inside me and many of them cut me through. That when I was received by the surgeon, I was declared dead. During my hospitalization, I used to see this hand of mine, right hand, and I used to feel that my hand was lost. From a generic perspective, that day I lost a lot of things. But from my perspective, that is the day when my life started. Hello everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Foggy Days. Major Devinder Pal Singh is an inspirational, 100% disabled war veteran who was injured during the Kargil War in 1999. He was brought dead to the hospital, but revived and overcame his multiple disabilities and became the first amputee, marathon and blade runner of India. Besides breaking many records and contributing to social causes, he has also worked in the sphere of welfare of disabled and war disabled soldiers. Here, he is being interviewed by a young NCC cadet, Sohrab Singh of St. Kabir Public School, Chandigarh, for 40 days in an unscripted, freewheeling interview. Sohrab himself is a keen observer of military matters and international relations and hails from a military family. Hello everybody. Today we are with Major D.P. Singh and he is a war disabled veteran. He lost a limb in the Kargil war and we will be asking him a few questions today. So without any delay, let's get right into it. Uh, so growing up in Roorkee, uh, which is the regimental center of the Bengal sappers, although you were commissioned into the Dobra Regiment. What influence did that have on you as a child? There were two things which impacted the mind of that kid who was growing in Roorkee. One, I got connected to the history of Sikhism through Gurdwara Sahib. I used to go regularly with my grandparents to Gurdwara and listen to the uh, various stories of gurus who gave their selfless sacrifice for the sake of others. And the other thing was the regimental center because I all uh, every day I used to travel from my home to my school which was in Khanjarpur, Kendra Vidyalaya Khanjarpur through the Bengal regimental center. So the aura of cantonment and the aura of uniform and the regimented lifestyle, <clears throat> PT, parade, games, in a very synchronized manner happening, everything. And whatever little bit I knew about the armed forces, I could relate both the things because as I came to know through Gurdwara Sahib about the Sikh history, that selflessly they used to serve others and still do so. Similarly, the armed forces also selflessly serve others and doing it since ages. So this connection actually inspired me to live my history in the present through the army. And that is how I got inclined towards joining army. Let me tell you, in Rudki, which is famous for IIT Rudki, all my classmates were inclined to get into engineering and join IIT or various engineering college. But I never bought a form in engineering. I was funded clear the 8th class onward itself. That the only thing which I am uh, dreaming about or aspire to join is to wear olive green uniform as an officer. That's very nice, sir. So there were two things, as you said, that inspired you. One was Sikh history and one was the military. So Exactly. Uh, Sikh, uh, Sikh history taught you about these values of selflessness, sacrifice and the Sikh history is intertwined with military history and it's very uh, coincidentally related and absolutely you see 
the chetwood motto what does it teaches us it speaks about country comes first then comes your team and in the end comes your own ease and comfort and this is what the value system which has been followed in the sikh history also wherever whether it is a calamity in natural calamity or man made calamity you see even today the sikhs are the frontiers to uh, organize langars or 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 organize the support system be it is is impacted area or be it bangladesh or be it any earthquake or whatever similarly in the similar fashion arm forces does everywhere wherever any machinery you know feels himself uh, machinery feels feels itself weak in carrying out the activity they look forward look up to the arm forces and arm forces comes there and do everything selflessly and just walk away after completing the task without taking even the credit of that so sir you were talking about how other children in your uh, school were talking about <laughs> taking engineering personally i would never because maths is completely out of my league <laughs> so so it's very nice to hear that these jawans and officers also inspired you and even i have personally found that the uniform is something that everybody looks up to exactly and it stands out in a crowd true uh, and that's something that needs to be upheld that dignity of the uniform absolutely so we were talking about rookie uh going from that uh, this question is completely unrelated but uh what place in india is your favorite out of all of the places i'm sure you've been to a lot and uh, what is your favorite out of all of those throughout the country we have beautiful places but what makes a difference is the how you are emotionally connected to one particular place and you get emotionally connected wherever you spend a lot of time where you have spent your childhood you have lot of friends and family circle around so that is rudki of course sir okay so uh and i i i think you also have some connect with the rudki am i right i do sir my grandfather actually served in the bengal sappers oh wonderful so uh yeah sir so we both have a connection there and uh well moving on uh how has your injury uh impacted your life for those who don't know uh major dp singh was injured in war and he lost a limb but i am not the one giving an interview here so i'll let him do the talking <laughs> well uh, losing the limb is the least bothersome part of the injuries it happened in operation vijay way back in 1999 while i was deployed uh, along with the boys of seven dogra on line of control in palamwala area uh, which is famous as chicken neck chamjodiya side of the uh, line of control Uh, i was commanding a small post with one jco and 28 other ranks and my post was from a, 80 meters away from the enemy post as the luck would have there was a little pause in the firing which was continuously going on since long since many days on 13th of july there was a, suddenly there was a little pause in the firing and initially i felt good because आई थॉट कि चलो चाय पानी पीने का थोड़ा सा टाइम मिल गया बिकॉज बहुत लगातार बहुत दिनों से फायरिंग चल रही थी बट देन वैन इट कंटिन्यूड फॉर वन फुल डे आई गॉट लिटल यू नो अन दैट वाई इज इट द एनिमी इज गिविंग सो मच ऑफ गैप पर एप्स दे आर प्लानिंग आउट समथिंग एंड दैट्स वॉट हैपन ऑन फिफ्टीन ऑफ जुलाई नाइनटीन नाइन्टी नाइन अर्ली मॉर्निंग दे स्टार्टड फायरिंग uh motor on my post what i realized in the hindsight later on that perhaps during those two days they were <clears throat> doing the recce of the post and they were pinpointing me in particular that keeping um, you know an eye on my move that where do i sit what do i do throughout the day 
because when they started firing again on 15th of July, those bombs were landing on me only. The first one got landed a little far away. The second they corrected and it uh, landed a meter and a half away from me. Now that bomb uh, was of 52 mm mortar. Mm. So 52 mm mortar as per the teaching from the point of impact, 8 meter dia is the killing Kill range radius. Yes. And I was hardly meter and a half away. So it did impact me because all the shrapnels uh, either cut me through, left me as a pool of blood or, or uh, got uh, stubbed inside me, embedded inside me still. And I became unconscious within fraction of seconds. Uh, you can make out that there are 73 shrapnels still inside me and many of them cut me through. So how many wounds could have been generated by that one bomb? So heavy blood loss uh, made me unconscious within fraction of seconds. Here played came the role of uh, my boys. And I always take pride in sharing that this is what the tradition of the armed forces disrespecting their own life, dis disrespecting their own uh, safety. The boys of Seven Dogra, you know, had only one thing in front of them to evacuate me to the safe distance. Knowing well that enemy is 80 meter away within the small arm firing range, knowing very well that there is a river stream flowing behind my post and one of the stretcher wearer was a weak swimmer. Later, I came to know that he did slip also in between, but he did not give up. So, this is the bravado of the Seven Dogra boys that I could survive that injury. They evacuated me to the battalion headquarter across the uh, Ditchcom DCB, Ditchcom Band. Yes. And from the DCB, my RMO took over in the ambulance and it took two and a half hours to reach to the nearest hospital, which was MH Aknur. During this two and a half hour of the journey, heavy blood loss and a cardiac arrest en route made me reach in a position that when I was received by the surgeon, I was declared dead. The surgeon had told that take this body to the mortuary. But as the luck would have again, because of the never say die spirit of Lieutenant Colonel Rajinder Singh, who was the anesthesiologist present in that small hospital, he did not give up and he revived me. Anesthesiologists, you know, are specialized in uh, giving you anesthesia also yes. and reviving you also. Though somehow he was expert and uh, he played over, he, his expertise played over me and he revived me. But the injury status was very bad. So if you, generally I joke around on that part that you tell me the body part and I'll tell you what injury is there. <laughs> Other than my face and my vital organs, there is not even a single body part where the injury is not there. Be it uh, fracture on splinter in the elbow, be it partial removal of intestine, hearing loss, uh, splinters in the chest area, splinters in the liver in particular, splinter in the groin uh, area, splinters in the stump, amputated stump. The left leg is operated for medial meniscus and crucial knees operated and a big chunk of muscle from the calf and thigh got removed because of the uh, shrapnel injuries. So not even a single body part which is not injured. In fact, during my hospitalization, I used to see this hand of mine, right hand, and I used to feel that this hand has been isme koi chot nahi lagi to ek din aisa aaya ki uh, i was learning uh, how to ride kinetic honda you mere paas bullet hua karti thi wo bullet maine you know my gave up that bullet and i started learning how to ride kinetic honda which was a automatic scooter to auto wale ne ek din aake thoda sa practice ke time takkar maar di aur main gir gaya i fell on my right side and i uh, immediately, जो आपका reaction होता है हाथ लगाने वाला 
वो हाथ लगाने ठीक से और ये उंगली के ऊपर यू सी दिस फिंगर ऑफ माइन दे मिडल फ्लैंक गॉट ओवर राइड ईच अदर एंड इसके बीच में चिप फ्रैक्चर हो गया था बट द बेस्ट पार्ट इज नॉट दिस बेस्ट पार्ट इज जिस सर्जन ने मुझे रिसीव किया था डिक्लेयर करा था डेड वो तब तक ऑर्थोपेडिशन बन चुका था सो वेन आई वॉज इन कमांड हॉस्पिटल एंड आई गॉट दिस इंजरी आई वॉज रेफर टू द ऑर्थोपेडिशन फॉर फर्दर ट्रीटमेंट एंड लो एंड बिलो द सेम गाय सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी आई रिक्वेस्टेड इनकी सर ये उंगली बचा लेना प्लीज और वो उंगली ऐसी बचाई कि इसकी बाद में सर्जरी करवानी पड़ी मुझे <laughs> so that's a comic character in my pa you know throughout the journey but then as a luck would have ye sab hona hi tha it was all destined to happen because 15th of july is the day when i got injured uh, from a generic perspective that day i lost lot of things but from my perspective that is the day when my life started because ये yeah, exactly and that's how I celebrate it as a death anniversary and rebirth day. I do a cake cutting on which it is written Happy Death Anniversary and Rebirth Day. <coughs> Because if you see every achievement started from that day onwards. If I could run on the uh, as the first amputee marathoner of India, if I could run on blade, if I could do if I could do skydiving or whatever I could do, it happened only after losing the leg and after got getting injured so badly. That's very gruesome, sir. <laughs> but but also very inspiring and somewhat sweet. So uh, you told me that almost every body part in your body has some kind of injury. Exactly, and. uh despite all of that despite the splinters in your leg despite your finger being fractured uh you have gone on and on and on regardless of whatever happened to you and you became india's first blade runner and that's very inspiring you were talking about your way on to that Uh, onto the hospital when you were injured and did you ever regret joining the army mm. during that time or ever ever did you ever regret it no as i mentioned that this was all destined in my opinion uh, this was supposed to happen like that uh, never ever in my life if you ask me a different question also that what do i want to change in my life i don't want to change anything everything whatever has happened was supposed to happen and has happened so beautifully that i take pride in that there is no regret there is no looking back there is no going back and revising and you know rewriting the script of my life there is no need destiny is very very powerful but as a human being we have the power of doing karma like for example right now we are sitting and talking to each other so i have two choices either to answer your question or to say no i don't know <laughs> second next question okay everybody interview over let's <laughs> wrap it up <laughs> right so if we carry on with the interview interview will uh, you know there will be a good outcome good product will come out so i am saying yes to it yes to the action which i am supposed to it do and answering your all the questions if i if i look at it from a no perspective then the interview will get over here there will be no product similarly in each moment of life we have two choices either to face that issue in that particular moment and get involved with the yes perspective and resolve that or to duck sit and avoid and justify and run away from there so uh so talking about disabilities uh i i am digressing a bit but have you heard of uh, general adrian carton of the british army no i did not uh so he was uh, uh he was an officer he was from belgium originally but he wanted to join the british army to this is a story from a long time ago 
I think about the 1890s and uh, he joined the British army. He uh, went to the Boer War, which was which took place in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Then he served in World War One, then World War Two, and eventually he rose to the, to the rank of Lieutenant General. He also earned the uh, Victoria Cross, which is the highest gallantry award in the British Empire. Right. So, uh, through the course of his military <coughs> career, he injured. His ankle, his leg, his stomach, his hip, his face, he lost an ear, he lost an eye, and he got disfigured. And also, he had to amputate his own hand. He So, essentially, during World War II, he used to fight with a revolver. And also, he survived two plane crashes. He tunneled out of a prisoner of war camp. Hello, guy. Hell of a guy, sir. Exactly, <laughs> and that, and even after tunneling out of a prisoner of war camp, he didn't just run back to Britain. He then uh, helped the Italian uh, underground resistance, which uh, fought the fascist government. Super. So, sir, this illustrious career he, he reminds me of you because of your positive outlook on all that has happened to you. So, even he said when he was asked about. How he felt uh, about the First World War. Uh, he simply said, "Frankly, I quite enjoyed it." <laughs> so he reminded me quite a bit of you. Thank you, sir. I am honored. I don't think I deserve this uh, equality with such a great general of uh, Ashwail era. But I am great that. Thank you so much, sir. But I mean. I can draw a lot of parallels between him and you. And I think it is a matter of uh, mindset and attitude. The achievements can be different for different people in a different exactly. arena and different uh, sphere of life. But what makes a difference everywhere and anywhere is how do you think and what is your approach toward every situation which is coming in front of you on a daily basis. Yes, sir. exactly. So moving on. Uh, how was your experience between being injured and between joining the army? What was that small period like? Well, that got spent uh, in mandatory courses. I did not come to know how it went by because 1997, December 6th, I got commissioned. And on 11th or 12th of January 1998, I joined unit after... Uh, spending my one month vacation and going to Dogra Regimental Center, Faisalabad, and from there joining the unit in Hyderabad. There I spent few days and uh, the mandatory young officer course. Uh, I was detailed to for YO86 in Mau. I went for YO's course. By the time I came back, unit had uh, shif- got shifted to Plawala location. I joined the unit in Plawala and spent few days. Then I got detailed to the commando course, mandatory commando course, again to Belgao. That was the best place. And those were the best days because commando, you eat, sleep, get rugged out and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, after commando, I underwent the knee surgery. My left knee got operated. Uh, because I broke this knee yes, sir. Uh, in martial art. Uh, during my school days, I used to learn Taekwondo. So, I reported to my commanding officer and there came the role of the same comic character whom I met even before <laughs> he declared me dead once. Uh, my CO told me that please go and report to the nearest MH. Uh, I was fully aware that the trouble is because of uh, um, ligament, ligaments are torn because I had done an MRI outside in the civil and the MRI had given the report that it's broken ligament which is creating trouble. But uh, a young officer who was having only one star on the shoulder cannot dictate terms to the doctors. Hmm. So, on the advice of my CO, I was told to go and report to the MH. 
and they were sitting the same surgeon that was my first interaction with that surgeon and i requested him ki sir i have this trouble doctor told me okay sit down sit up sit down sit up i said what is this you are telling me ye main i was not telling him mai soch raha tha dimag mein ki ye to mai commando course mein isse zyada karke aa chuka hu why are you judging me by sitting and sitting up type of a situation anyway he did not uh, agree to my request to refer me to orthopedic that time he was only a surgeon he told me that listen uh, these are the books which i have read and you are suggesting me what to do and as a young officer second lieutenant i could not do anything but saluted him and turned back and came out so this is how the uh, the whole time before the war started because after that i went for commando course and with the permission of co i got the knee of sur- surgery done outside when i joined back the unit i was undergoing physiotherapy only and it was suggested to me that to do physiotherapy for 6 month but within a month the war started and i lost the other leg not the injured one mm-hmm. the sound leg so what left over is that uh, i generally joke around on this part also that my right side is no more left and left side is no more right <laughs> so uh, sir moving on to a slightly different topic uh, regarding ptsd uh what do you think are some misconceptions in society about ptsd especially in indian society and how do you think that we should overcome these misconceptions or any problems in general that you feel are there post traumatic stress disorder is not just related to the soldiers of course soldiers are majorly impacted because we get exposed to such uh, traumatic conditions day in and out but even a normal human being who meets with an accident or uh, gets exposed to sudden uh, emotionally disturbed scenario say for example somebody loses an ear or a dear one whom he, he or she was very emotionally deeply connected so for some days that person may be in hallucination type of a uh mindset uh, finding that person whom he he or she lost still alive or talking about that all these symptoms are related to ptsd so these symptoms are genetically avoided by the people ki ye to koi baat nahi aisi hai thode din mein theek ho jayega where on one side we are getting nuclearized the erstwhile support system of family the bond homi the bonding or the regular social activities of sitting together chit, doing chit chat opening up with each other and friends and family circle is reducing because of the internet and social media on the other hand we have not rise to the level where we create a support system holistically in society or in the organization to fill that gap where somebody who is exposed to disturbed mental health can take resort to and seek some uh, you know support out of it so this gap is needs to be fulfilled and that can only be made possible by making people aware about it so wherever i get the opportunity i do speak that i got exposed to ptsd i, I and not just because of the war scenario but because of the later on various uh, setbacks which i have suffered be it personal or emotional setbacks had also impacted me whenever i am in a little pessimism mode of mindset or in a anxious or a depressive state of mind i divert my focus to reach out to people to go out and go for a drive or Uh, do any activity which uh, makes me happy yes sir. so every individual should know that which are the types of activity uh, makes that person happy it may be uh, going for a bike ride it may be going for a long drive it may be going for a movie it may be reaching out and talking to your friends it may be going for a shopping it may be cooking it may be reading it may be sleeping 
it may be singing it may be listening to music it may be any damn thing but if i know these are the things which helps me to divert my focus remember what i am using the word divert yes sir not to stop because the moment you say stop thinking negative actually what you are doing you are reminding the person think negative very well said sir and i think that mental health is a topic that's not talked about very much and i think that we should be more open about it and uh, break a lot of the stereotypes that are there like uh, for example you talked about crying there's a common stereotype that men don't cry and i don't think that's true because a lot of men do and you're not uh, you're not weak for that uh, in foreign countries i've seen that uh, soldiers issues are talked about more and also veering away from this topic a bit uh, even in civilians uh, as you said we don't treat mental issues very seriously here and i think that uh, it really needs to be paid more attention to and it's not just soldiers that can get these issues and even civilians can and also uh, i would like to talk about an incident uh during world war 2 again uh, there was an american general named general patton he was very famous uh, a lot of even in fact a lot of uh, tanks were named after him that are uh, right. enemy used in a lot of our uh, a lot of the yes. wars we fought and uh, that general he created a lot of controversy in an incident i believe during the landings on uh, in france uh, it was known as d day he slapped a soldier who was talking about his mental issues or i believe he was shell shocked a term that people use mm. so that incident created a lot of controversy and it lo- led to a lot of uh, awareness about mental health in the us regarding veterans so that uh, that's my little input on this and uh, no you are right you see what makes a difference between the soldier or anybody who is not a soldier is the definition or threshold of bearing the pain for every individual is different i may pinch somebody and that may be very painful to that person but somebody may slap me but it may not be as painful as it as the pinch was for that particular person so threshold of bearing the pain is different for every individual very very well said sir and uh, i think that we uh, had a very good talk uh, although unfortunately i think we have to end it here uh, but it was really great talking to you sir and uh, especially uh, this last mental health topic it was very eye opening because of how our society treats this issue and how we need to treat it how we need to view it and if if you are having any problems try to reach out reach out to others and get help so uh, i thank you again for the stock sir thank was... you sorab and it is wonderful interacting with you i am glad that a youngster like you has started talking about such issues on such platforms because you are the next generation you are the future if in your age people start talking about such situation and such uh, topics they start discussing then slowly and gradually people will surely get aware about what is the way to handle challenges what is the way to handle negative emotions what is the way to handle mental health issues and future is bright i'm so glad that you done you are doing such issues interacting you, on sir. your platform thank you so much all the best for all your thank future you, endeavors also thank god you bless much. thank you friends our fauji's have been and continue to be the lifeline of our nation come hell or high water they have always been there for us whether in times of war or natural calamity or any other challenge india has ever faced 
and the culture, traditions and history of the Indian military are part of a rich heritage painstakingly preserved by one and all. To cherish and celebrate this heritage, a unique initiative called Foggy Days has been launched by the budding startup 99 Beagles. So what is Foggy Days? Well, it is primarily an oral history project based on interviews and recordings. Foggies always have tons of stories to relate, many of them inspiring, thought-provoking, funny or engaging, and highly satisfying for the curious, especially young adults in their formative years. These engaging interactions between officers, men and women from our services, with young adults from schools and universities are being captured on camera by us. We want to showcase the diversity of lived experiences on the one hand and the perceptions and expectations on the other. Allow me to also add that the scope of Foggy Days initiative is not limited to just oral history. It also encompasses the written word and the world of military publishing. Already, several books by eminent military authors have been published under this umbrella and all have been well received by the readers. The 40 Days website is another crucial resource designed to house the diverse aspects of this project. It features multiple blogs, reference and archival material, and a community newsletter that highlights the progress made as well as the new recordings and books. Feel free to log on and subscribe. I warmly welcome you to be a part of this initiative, no matter what color uniform of Oji wore or whether he or she served on terra firma, flew in the air or rode the waves. The fact remains that each one of these brave hearts is a reservoir of remarkable tales and cherished memories. Foggy Days wants to share these memories and tell these tales to a much wider audience. If a nation is made of memories, then Foggy Days will prove that Foggy men and women have contributed some of the best. As a Foggy, you can reach out to us and tell us about your rich experiences. Get in touch and we will revert with an audiovisual team equipped to capture your recall. Or if you are too distant, we can guide you about how to record and send it to us. Of course, you can also write your tale and send it to us to be featured here. We have the wherewithal to capture you on video from whatever location on the planet. All we want is to know your story so that India knows her story better. It is incomplete without yours. Please also feel free to send your contributions to this archive of India's valor in the form of nostalgic pieces, anecdotes, pictures, or other content you may wish to share with the wider Foggy Day community. On behalf of Team 99 Beagles, I thank you. As they say, Foggy Days never end. In fact, they are just beginning. So, Foggy Days forever. Jai Hind.